So I've been on holiday for two weeks. We're on our last day, in fact, our last couple of hours. And I've been meaning to film this for you for the whole two weeks and haven't got around to doing it. It's a workout. It's um, a strength-based, but also a flexibility workout as well. It's gonna work you quite hard, potentially. I'm gonna show you varying levels. And I'm also gonna show you how you can do this with whatever you've got to hand. Just so happens, we're in Mama Rosa's house here in Spain, and she had this holding up as a, as a doorstop, holding her door open. Um, but I also brought one of these bands and one of these bands with me. Um, so I'll do one round using the kettlebell, and then I'll do another round using one of each of these bands, one or the other, doesn't really matter which one I use, uh, to show you how you can use either one of those. What I'll also do is, as I say, put in varying levels of difficulty. I'm also going to do a little warm up in it as well. So 20 minutes, bang, done. Yes, let's go for it. Okay, so I'm going to stand on the mat and I'm going to start warming up with doing some squats. So we're going to start off really slowly and I'm going to hold my hands into this position because this is how I'll either hold the band or the kettlebell when we're, we're doing the squats with the, with the weight resistance. Feet a little bit more than hip distance apart, very standard for a squat position. Make sure though that you are using the inside the balls of the feet. I do everything as much as I can barefoot because that trains the foot, it makes the foot stronger. Um, we're not doing anything jumping, anything like that, so it's absolutely fine to go barefoot. Uh, if you're not happy with that, obviously you can wear shoes, but I would let, like you to think about being grounded to the floor and pressing through the inside of the ball of your foot and imagine three points on the bottom of your foot, one in line with your big toe, one in line with your little toe and one in line with your heel. And it's like you're trying to gather your mat up underneath those three points. So you press down through the inside of the ball of the foot and you draw up through those feet. This activates the core of the foot. The exercise is called short foot. It's very subtle. It's using the inner muscles of the feet. So there's work in the tendons that pull up through the posterior uh, uh, muscles, through the, the, the um, calves, through the lower leg, sorry. And then uh, you want to pull in through your core muscles, through your center draw the shoulder blades down and really think about your posture all the way through this. You're gonna activate your core all the way through. So the shoulder blades have to come down because when you're holding that weight or the bands, you've got to draw the shoulder blades down and back and really tuck the elbows in. Nothing with the elbows out. Elbows are gonna be drawn right in so they're right onto your rib cage. So you've got a really strong upper body core. You've got a strong foot core. You've got a strong pelvic claw. Uh, core even. So you're pulling up from the back passage to the front passage. So think of that drawing in through your center and into your belly. Go take a nice big deep breath. Inhale, exhale, relax. And then we're just going to very slowly squat down and then lift back up. Now I am incredibly stiff because I haven't done any exercise, but very, very little exercise this holiday. In fact, I went kayaking two days ago uh, and that has made me really stiff because I hadn't done anything. I certainly haven't done any kayaking. Um, so I'm feeling really stiff. So this mobility is as much for me as it is for you. So you can see at the moment, I can't squat very low. I always have very tight calves anyway. So for me to squat low is quite difficult. So we're gonna gradually warm up and see if we can all go a little bit lower. What's hard for me mechanically is also to keep my chest up as I squat. Now you may find that you can keep your chest up a little bit higher. We're all built a little bit differently. Okay, but I'm trying to center my weight back. So it doesn't matter how your squat looks in terms of your chest position. What's important is that your butt is out your weight is into your heels and you're dropping down and you're trying to keep your chest up as much as you can but very importantly you're not rounding your back and you're not pushing your weight forward into your knees or bringing yourself forward you're dropping and sinking your weight back that enables you to keep your back straight activate your core and use your glutes to lift and that's the key thing you've got to lift up and extend at your hip uh, if you don't have your butt going back behind you, you can't use your glutes. So that's really important. So you're just dropping that down. Now we're going to slow it down some more as we go down. So we can go a little bit lower and then lift back up. And now I'm going to go even slower. And as I go slower, I'm going to rock side to side. Because that's releasing tension in my hips. And as I start to warm up the tendons and the muscles in the backs of my legs, I can start to go a little bit lower. Okay, now all the while I'm doing this, I'm drawing up through the core of my feet. And lifting up through my pelvic floor, working my shoulder blades down as well. And you can see my arms have obviously come away from my ribs as I drop down, but I'm still depressing the shoulder blades, working the shoulder blades down the back of the rib cage, and that's important to keep the neck nice and long. I'm also looking at you all the time. You're going to look at me, but essentially, 
chin is in, back of the neck stays long. So your eye level goes from looking out front to dropping down to the floor, just a couple of feet in front of you. So that's important as well. So you keep that chin drawn in, back of the neck nice and long. Okay, now we're gonna to start to speed it up. So we're gonna drop down and up. So drop down and lift back up. Drop down and lift back up. Drop down and lift back up. Just warming the legs up nicely now. So you can do that four more times. Three more times. Two more times. One more time. Now we're gonna take the leg back behind us, work into the legs, squeeze into the buttocks and change. Take the leg back, squeeze into the buttocks and change. Take the leg back, squeeze into the buttocks and change. So as I'm doing this, I'm pulling my leg out from my hip flexors and I'm also trying to engage my core as I'm doing it. So you're just literally taking the leg behind. So rather than just doing a toe tap, but actually really focusing on length, using the core as you're doing it. Okay, now I'm gonna extend that to a lunge. So I'm gonna step back, drop down, and then pull the leg out. Step back, drop down, and then pull the leg out. Now when you go back into a lunge, go onto the ball of the foot, bring your body weight back so that you're not pushing your body forward. So you drop back, yeah? I'm gonna tuck my buttock underneath me so my back is up nice and tall, and then push from the front heel and engage my right buttock. That's this buttock here. Okay, so I lost my balance a little bit because I slowed down, but you can have a go at this. Don't worry if you do lose your balance, it doesn't matter. And engage, so step back, drop down, and engage. Do two more of those. Step back, drop down, and engage. Okay, I'm gonna move back on the mat now, so I've got a bit more room in front. We're gonna warm up a little bit more. And now I'm gonna crouch down. I'm gonna come forward, my knees are on the floor, and then I'm gonna drop back, and then I'm gonna lift back up. So you crouch down, butt back behind you. Come forwards, go back, and then lift up. Now, if you know you've got any issues with your back, if you know your core is a little bit weak, maybe you have diastasis or any issues in your abs, then you're gonna just allow the knees to drop down to the floor, and you're gonna do this quite slowly. <clears throat> okay, now as we get better at this, and you'll see this is a movement throughout the workout, you can do this with your knees off the floor, and you might be able to do that now. Okay, now if you do have any issues in your abs or in your back. It is possible that you can do this with the knees off the floor, but you've got to be able to engage your core. It's also really worth having a mirror so you can check your tummy as you're doing this. So have your phone or your iPad backed by a mirror so you can watch yourself against me as you're doing this. I'm gonna put the knees back down and then I'm going to lift up and go into a down dog, pull back and then just work the heels. And just alternate right and then left, releasing tension in the calves. So this is where I carry a lot of tension, so I know I need to do this. Warming my calves up, and then I'm gonna hold a down dog and pull back. Okay, and we also want to release tension in the hips and in the back. So I'm releasing some tension in the back now. Then I'm gonna do a hip rolling movement now to really warm the hips up, take the knee out. What this also does, it gets the back moving a little bit as well. So I do this in a few of my workouts, something that anybody can do. So you're rolling into the floor and then you're pressing the other front of the other hip into the floor. So you press your right buttock or whichever buttock is the leg bent into the floor. It doesn't matter which leg you're on. And then the other leg pressing the hip into the floor. Okay, so you're rolling it through. If that is aggravating either one of your knees, Put a cushion underneath the back knee and just do it in a higher position on the front knee. Yep, so don't sink so low. Just come up higher as you're doing it, rolling it through. Okay, and then I'm going to change sides. Take the leg out, roll the hip, release that tension. Okay, so as you're doing this, you're pressing, rolling that way, and then pressing, rolling that way. Warming the back up, releasing through the waist and the rib cage as well as rotating through the hips, warming up all those hip rotators, trying to release them so that they don't hang in for dear life when you're doing certain movements, enabling you to work your big glute muscles a little bit more because you're releasing tension through those deep hip rotators. Okay, and then we're just gonna go into a forward open position. Come forward, open the hips, bring the arms back, and then lift the arms up and open the chest. And I'm drawing in through my core muscles as I do this and then I'm going to change legs. Now all of these positions are mimicking moves, we'll do throughout the workout. But 
so it's just a nice way now as I'm doing this I'm really trying to lift in through my core so you lift your belly in lift up through your pelvic floor and into your belly so again that's that stop a fart stop a weight and into your tummy and as you do that you get more length here and I'm just circling the arms around just to open you can do anything you like here just try and open your chest and release it okay we're warmed up we're ready to go so I'm gonna use the kettlebell in the first instance put your weight up nice and carefully so remember tuck the elbows in nice and tight to your sides so we're gonna start off really slowly so I'm gonna go down two counts and then up for two so I'm gonna go down for two and up for two so it's an equal base, lower and lift, but nice and slowly, yeah? So I'm going down for two. I'm really engaging my core. I'm pulling up through the arches of my feet, drawing up through those arches, remember? And then really thinking about working the shoulders down, <coughs> keeping my chin in, so you do the same. Look down the floor, two to three feet in front of you as you drop down, and then look up horizontally looking straight ahead as you come up squeeze the buttocks okay so now we're going to change the rhythm we're going to go down slower so I'm going to go down three two one and lift up three two one and lift up now really pushing through the heels and squeezing into the glutes three two one and lift up do two more like that three two one and lift up one more working the shoulder blades down Lifting in through the core. Now I'm going to go even slower. We're going to go seven, six, five, weight back, weight back, weight back, and lift. Again, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Do two more like that. Now if you feel anything in your lower back, don't go so low. Yeah, keep those elbows tucked in, draw the shoulder blades back and down. And one more. So we're going to seven, six, then we're going to go for a single count, we're going to go a little bit faster. Yeah, you ready? So lift and lower. Go, go. Down and lift. Down, should be fatiguing now. Yep. Work the shoulder blades down, lifting through your core, squeeze through your buttocks. We're going to go for four more. Three, two, and one. Now we're going to go into lunge. I'm going to step back with one leg, drop down, and lift this foot in and then I'm going to push up with the weight. Now I'm supporting the bottom of this, this kettlebell because this is too heavy for one shoulder for me. Yep. So I'm going to support underneath. If you've got a lighter weight, you might feel you can press it all the way up. But ideally you're using a weight. This is a 6K kettlebell. Ideally you're using a weight. It could be anything between 2 to 6 to 8 to 10 kilos. Um, but when you're using a double hand, you should have a heavier one and then a lighter one when you're pressing up overhead. So chances are you won't have that or you can't interchange it easily. If you have got two, you can change it. So you're just gonna put the other hand underneath support as you press up. Now, so this is level one. Just drop back, you don't have to go very low. Step in and press up, yep. Step back, drop down, step in and press back. And we can make it harder by dropping further back down into a lunge position and in. And we can make it harder still by balancing on one leg. Yeah, so there's your three levels. So you choose a level which you know is right for you. So you can drop back just a little way, down, in, and press, or you can go further, step back, drop down further, in, and press, or you can take that foot off the floor when you press. You've got to activate your core, lift in through your center as you're doing it. We're gonna do one more of these. Down, lift in, and press. Now we're going to step back and hold. Now I'm going to hold our lunge position. Easier, harder. Drop down and double up the presses. Go faster with them. Now use your core. Now really squeeze the buttock on the back leg. So squeeze it, squeeze it. Keep squeezing it. Keep lifting through your centre. Keep hollowing, keep breathing. And press up. So arms should be fatiguing now. I'm going to go five more. Four. Squeeze your right buttocks. Legs should be fatiguing as well. Two more, one more, and drop down. Now we're going to go into forward lunge position. So with the dumbbell or the kettlebell as I've got here, you've got to make sure you're really pulling into your back muscles and look at the position of my back. It's long. You do not round your back. You drop down. If you find this too much, put your knee on the floor. So here's level one. Pull, pull, knee on the floor. 
You can always put a cushion underneath your knee if you need to. Keep activating your core. Keep breathing it through. Keep pulling back behind you. Now you pull and you tuck your elbow right in as you're doing this. Slightly harder version. Knee off the floor. Yep. So you pull. Tuck that elbow in. Pull. Pull. Keep hollowing. Keep breathing. Harder version still. You pull. 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 Keep working the shoulder blades down. Keep breathing. So three levels again. Four more. Three more. Two more. Last one. Okay, now drop down to the floor. Now, if you're using a band, you just put your hand into the floor. I've got that kettlebell there. So we're going to do a press up and then a lift with a kettlebell. So you're going to drop down. And then lift. Change sides. Drop down. And then lift. If you don't have a kettlebell, you can just do the press up. And then lift. Yep. Press. And then lift. Press. And then lift. Now I'm not using the handle because you might have like a dumbbell where it's harder to use the handle. But you can do it obviously with the kettlebell. Like this. You can go a little bit lower. Pull. Down. Oops, I did that wrong. <laughs> and then pull. Yeah. So you can do it with the kettlebell or without. And then row. Okay, now we're going to hold it. Lift up and hold. Work the shoulder blades down and just hold and lift and use your core. I'm going to sink my hips down, find my centre. If that's too much for you, level one, knees on the floor. Just engage your core. Level two, knees off the floor. Engage your core. Lift your centre. Breathe, 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 breathe. Keep breathing, keep hollowing, keep breathing. Okay, level three, hold your plank. Okay, then we're going to go into walking planks. So level one, elbow, elbow, hand, hand, elbow, elbow, hand, hand. So you go left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left. So we're going to keep going and I'm going to show you the different levels. So knees off the floor. Keeping the knees underneath you. You can always put them back down whenever you need to if you find it gets too hard. three legs out stretched and again and again and again and then lower to the floor release into a dark position lengthen your arms open through your chest work your shoulders down squeeze into your buttocks level one rest the upper body just try lifting the legs, lift your belly, lift your pelvic floor up and away from the floor. Keep hollowing your abdominals, keep lifting your belly up, keep squeezing your buttocks, pull your legs out from your hip sockets. Level two, hands down by your side, squeeze your bottom, lift your core. Level three, arms up, extend the arms, extend the legs, but draw the shoulder blades down. Keep that apple under your chin, keep lifting your core, keep breathing. Back to level one, so you hold for as long as you can, squeezing, lifting, breathing, she says as she runs out of breath. Release and then pull back. And then we're going to do the whole thing over again. I'm going to use a band this time. Okay, so let's use the handle band. I might need to just use a little water. I hope you've got your water too. Okay, here we go with the band. You can use your kettlebell band, whatever you've got. I'm going to tuck my arms right in yep elbows are tucked into my side so exactly the same position as if you're using the kettlebell or you could use a, um, a handheld weight absolutely fine work the shoulders down lift into your center draw up through the arches of the feet and drop down slowly and then lift back up now we're warmed up so we should be able to drop into our low squats quite easily or as low as you want to go remember the lower you go the harder it is so you just drop down as low as you want you should have your mirror behind your iPad or your phone so you can see yourself mimicking my moves as you're doing this keep working the shoulders down keep that length into your neck engage your core press through the inside of the ball of the foot as you lift back up drop down okay we're gonna go three counts down so we're gonna go three two one and lift again three two one and lift 
again three two one and lift again three two one and lift two more on threes take the weight back and one more three two one now we're going to go slower so we're going to go seven six five four three two one and lift i go to seven got an itchy nose <laughs> sweat pouring on it three two we're doing four more of those so drop down shoulder blades down lift in through your core try to feel your pelvic floor weight back into your heels and one more seven six should i do one more for luck because i've actually lost count we'll do one more one more because i'm not sure do one more that's good and then we're going to go faster yeah weight into the heels breathe and go faster drop down and lift drop down and lift drop down and lift drop down and lift okay, four more three more two more one more now i'm going to step my right foot into the center i'm going to let go of the right handle i'm just going to hold the left so i'm going to step back drop down step in and press step back drop back down step in and press again drop back step in and press now we can go a little bit lower drop down harder version drop down lower step in and press and again drop back down step in and press or harder still drop back step down get the weight off and press yep again step back drop down get the weight off and press and again step back drop down take the weight off and press remember different versions you do the one that's right for you that's a little drop back not too far level one level two drop back further step back in and press level three the foot's going to come off the floor step back keep the back up nice and tall foot's coming off the floor and press okay come forwards into your row level one shorten your band really wind it around your hand and then pull pull sit pull pull level two knee comes off the floor keep lifting into your center keep breathing it through how are you doing you're right keep it going keep lifting your center keep working those shoulders down now remember you're level three so lift your foot off the floor this is really tricky with the band so you've got to really think about your center as you're doing it keep tucking your elbows in keep breathing keep lifting your core two more breaths one more she says falling over and then drop down to the floor i'm not going to use because i'm using a band this time i'm not going to use anything just to show you how you can do it so knees on the floor drop down up pull drop down up pull yep drop down up pull now i suppose in theory you could put the band underneath one hand and try and do it but i think it'd be a bit tricky but this is fine okay harder version extend yep drop down knees come down up and pull do you see that we didn't do that in the last one so you lower down in a full press up lower down then drop the knees down then lift up and then pull or you could do a full press up there we go taking my hands wider drop down lift back up and pull yep drop down lift back up and pull i'm gonna lower to the floor come all the way oh no sorry i'm not I'm gonna do walking planks so version one knees on the floor elbow elbow up up down down up oh the sun's come out i'm really sweating now so remember you're alternating so you go left right left right then right left right left harder version knees off the floor left right left right right left remember you can put the knees down at any point if you need to just put them down you've got to feel your core connecting and you've got to feel strong you feel challenged but strong full version i know i've got to do it down down up now if you feel you're not using your core then put those knees down now your knees further back that makes it a bit harder yep okay now we're going to drop down to the floor and go into that dark position 
Level one, rest the upper body, lift the legs, squeeze the buttocks together, bring the heels together, lift up through your pelvic floor, work the shoulder blades down, lift your belly up and away from the floor and breathe. Level two, hands down by your side, keep breathing, keep trying to engage your core, keep trying to lengthen your legs, keep trying to squeeze your buttocks, keep that apple under your chin. Keep breathing, keep squeezing, keep hollowing. Lengthen, 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 lengthen. Level three, arms go up, shoulder blades come down, apple under your chin. Extend, squeeze your bum, breathe, breathe, breathe. Keep breathing, keep hollowing, keep lengthening. And you're there. And release, pull back. And then we're gonna come up into a down dog. And extend and pull back. And lengthen through, work the shoulder blades down. Breathe it through, get length into your neck, hollow and breathe. And then come forward, go back down to the floor, take hold of one leg and stretch out through your quads. Now push your hip down into the floor, lengthen. I'm just doing these stretches quite quickly, but obviously if you've got more time, you can spend longer doing them. But the most important thing is to also do really good lengthening workouts. Now this is lengthening, but if you do our Pilates flow workouts, there's a lot more lengthening in there. But we have tried to balance this out with some lengthening as well. And then you're gonna come back up, duck, pull back, bring one leg forward, drop the hips down, lengthen through the front. Remember how we started off? Bringing the arms up and circling back. Now just hold the arms up and just allow your hips to sink forward. Work the shoulders down, lift into your center, breathe. There, we're gonna cross this leg in front. Remember that movement we did right at the beginning. Now your hips will be nice and warm now. So let's just hold the stretch this time and drop down and feel the stretch. Push your hip over to the right or to the bent leg side. And then change and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So come forwards. Drop down, lengthen, let the shoulders down, lift into your center, apple under your chin, look straight ahead, use your core, lift in through your pelvic floor into your belly. And then, cross this leg in front. If you want to roll with it, roll with it for a bit. And you just sit in it and hold. And that is your workout. Now if you really wanted to, you could go back and do it again on each side. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did enjoy it, please do like and subscribe. And obviously you can make comments as well because any comments you make will help us to make further content that you like. Hope to see you again soon.